The President, please be seated. On the trial chambers uh, is now back in sessions uh, to hear uh, the, the facts uh, and the security officer, please uh, bring the accused to the dock. Uh, before giving the floor to the civil party lawyers uh, group two, the trial chamber, I would like to ask to the uh, lawyer of uh, civil party group one, uh, based on your uh, uh, time estimations, uh, how long uh, would you like to use uh, to put put the question to uh, the accused for uh, the facts that we are hearing. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, councillors. Um, we would have hoped, quite frankly, um, and that was the, the sort of understanding among the civil parties, to be able to use the time which was, um, which was left by the other groups. And if we can have our 45 minutes and on top of that use half of the time left, which means 20 minutes, we can assure you that we would uh, definitely uh, finish by that time, which is about an hour. And in, if that is possible, then we would, um, my uh, colleague, Ms. Sudinsky, could, could use the other 20 minutes left. And what I would request as well is if uh, we could uh, be allowed to share within my group uh, between um, Ms. Tishrina and myself, and not like what uh, my colleague said yesterday, just one person talking on behalf of my group, but we would be grateful if we could be allowed to share within, within my group. Thank you. Uh, the next, um, the floor is open for uh, the civil party lawyers, uh, group two, uh, to uh, put uh, questions uh, to the accused uh, in related to the facts uh, for uh, our hearings. Yes, please. Good, good morning and um, thank you, Mr. President. Good morning to everybody. Um, I assume that um, the Chamber agrees upon what my colleague has said that we share and can take um, 20 minutes from the time that was left from the other groups. Then I would like to start this morning and continue um, where I stopped yesterday concerning the female interrogators. Um, you explained us yesterday that the female interrogators received a training um, and they attended um, interrogations of senior interrogators. My question now is how long did these female interrogators attended such 
training sessions or such uh, interrogations to start their work as interrogator. The accused, uh, Miss uh, Lawyer, uh, firstly, uh, the uh, female interrogator, uh, they did not get any training from me. Uh, secondly, uh, they went to observe the interrogations by other interrogator, and they, then they started their interrogation. Uh, and later, I uh, took them for uh, education based on the policy of interrogations. So I uh, used the documents uh, as I used for others interrogator. I will precise my question. Before they started to interrogate, how many sessions did they attend to learn how to do it? The accused, I would like to uh, reiterate uh, that, as I told you, that uh, those uh, female interrogators uh, did not receive any direct technique of interrogation from me. Excuse me. That was not my question. Or that was not my, not, that was not what I said. You told us that they attended and observed senior interrogators to learn. And I wanted to know the time that was needed for them before they could start their own interrogations. I did not say that you trained them specially. That was not said. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, this is because of uh, our misunderstanding uh, due to uh, translation. So I, I uh, do not know for sure how many times that they observe the interrogation by the senior interrogator. Can you make a rough or estimate very roughly? Was it once or 10 or 50 or 100 times? The accused, uh, Miss Lawyer, it's about five times the most. Thank you very much. Have you been informed about any emotions or reluctance or hesitancy that appeared among these female interrogators who were called to interrogate now? Have you heard any emotions like this from senior interrogators or did they tell you something like this? In the accused, uh, uh, Miss Lawyer, I have no uh, connection or relationship with those uh, female interrogators, those who were in charge uh, to introduce them to the training. It was Comrade Ho, and uh, Comrade Mott was the one who uh, supervised their emotions. So uh, at that time, I just managed to have those female interrogators to put into their work. That's all I need at that time.
I move to another issue. Do you uh, recall an interrogator with the name, excuse me, I hope I pronounce it well, uh, with the name Touch, T-O-U-C-H. Do you know this interrogator? Uh, the accused, uh, uh, so uh, could you please uh, tell me whether Tu is a female or a male interrogator? I do not remember. It uh, was a male interrogator and he was later imprisoned in S21. The accused, I uh, do not know him. Do you know about witnesses who are talking that uh, this interrogator, Touch, was charged with a sexual offense and that he was therefore arrested and tried as well to suicide himself? The accused, uh, uh, Miss uh, Lawyer, I uh, do not know George and, uh, and the incidents in which uh, the, the male interrogator uh, con uh, commit uh, physical abuse and the suicide, I uh, do not know about that. My next question um, concerns your core work, that means annotating and reading confessions. I would like to know if you have read as well confessions of the interrogators who were detained in S21. Uh, the accused, uh, Miss Lawyer, yes, I did read, but I completely forget uh, the contents now. Then I would like to confront you with the content of some of these confessions, and there are confessions of New Kanta, Chiakak, Buteng, and Chiamai. Do you know one or all of these interrogators? I hope I pronounced it well. The accused, I uh, do not know. Their confessions were analyzed uh, by David Chandler and uh, he reported that they confessed having committed sexual offenses. My question is, have you ever read in confessions of S21 interrogators um, the admission having committed sexual offenses? Have you ever read about this in confessions. The accused, uh, I would like to tell you that uh, the confessions on which I annotated, it's clear that I read that if there was no annotations by me, 
uh, it might be that I never read that confession because I uh, did not pay much attention. So please, uh, Miss Lawyer, look at that confession with, to see whether or not uh, there is a, uh, there's my annotation on that. The President's um, the Civil Party Lawyers Group 2, uh, you are reminded that the, uh, the confessions obtained from the uh, torture cannot be used in uh, uh, this uh, uh, questioning, uh, except it is uh, so uh, you uh, should not base on uh, the confession as a result of the uh, torture. So uh, you should be cautious uh, on this matter. Thank you, Mr. President. But uh, only to explain uh, briefly, uh, it was not to use my aim was not to use them. But I wanted to uh, know if he read such uh, statements and if he believed that these statements were true or not true, and if he had undertaken anything in this regard to investigate, for example, uh, these con offenses, uh, or if he believed, for example, that these admissions were not true, as it was the case with CIA and uh, KGB confessions, and therefore the accused already um, responded to uh, such questions if and uh, to which extent he believed that confessions and the con their content was true. That was uh, the idea that I had. Um, but we heard that the accused did not read all confessions, and um, to be sure, only those confessions with annotations uh, were read and surely read by him. Am I right? The accused, yes, that is correct. I would like to move to um, my next point. And uh, I start with a general question to come then to um, the point that I want to know concerning the functioning of S21. And um, the general question is, um, is it correct to say that any immoral offense was punished according to the party line? The accused, it is correct. Thank you. Do you also agree that rape or sexual abuse was a serious moral offense and harshly punished during the decay period in general? The accused, that is correct. Would you also agree that it was the party line policy that inserting a stick into the vagina was such a so-called immoral, serious immoral offense and that a perpetrator would have been punished severely? I'm talking about general policy. The accused. I would like to reserve my right to remain silent on this matter. The President, the question is repetitive. Please move on. was only to specify if inserting a stick into the vagina is also part of such offense. But I move on, and um, I would 
like to recall that you told us that you did not um, did not know that inserting a stick into the bagina was a crime at that time during the decay period. You told us yesterday and last week the same. We were not informed, not fully informed about the law and did not know that this was a crime. My question is the reason why you did not know that this was a crime, although the policy was very strict. My question is, was the reason for this that against enemies, against prisoners who were considered as enemies, that this was not considered as a crime? Is this the reason? The accused. I did not study any penal code of Cambodia. Therefore, I did not know about this matter. I reported through the chamber already that uh, probably even my superior did not know it. And this is my response. Regarding the party line, it did not stipulate any issue on this matter. Did you know that this was a wrongdoing in general or not? The accused. I reserve my right to remain silent. I have no further questions so far on this issue and will transfer to my colleagues. Thank you very much. The President, the floor now is open for the lawyer for Civil Party Group 1. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honours and all the participants in the proceedings. I have uh, some questions to be posed to the accused. My first question is related to the smashing, the large-scale smashing towards the end of the regime. Did the smashing of the prisoners at S21, the large-scale smashing, how many times did it occur? The accused, the en masse smashing at the final stage was amounted to about 300 or so prisoners from my recollection. Question. Thank you. And my second question is related also to the final phase that is towards the early January 1979. At that stage, can you recall the, for the remaining prisoners who had to be smashed finally, how many of them at the final stage? 
the accused. I did not think of the numbers. What I did was just to make sure the orders from the upper echelon had to be fully implemented by my subordinates. It means all the remaining prisoners had to be smashed except the four people from the Joe 8 unit, which I request them to be remained alive. These four people from the Yo 8 were the group that shot the foreigners who came with the Richard Detmond, Elizabeth Becker, and uh, Cowell, and they were arrested, and I wanted to interrogate these four people. That is my recollection. This Rina. In such situation, could you manage the S-21 regarding the prisoners who were killed in the cells? How many of them were killed in bed in each cell or room in S-21? The accused, thank you for raising this matter up. Only the Yo 8 the four of them were killed or smashed by the interrogators with the bayonet. So the four of them were killed. Thank you, says the lawyer. My next question. Also, toward the final stage of the Democratic Campuchia, can you recall did you know in advance regarding the situation at the time? The accused. When I fled, I only had a short, a short sleeve shirt and a pair of thongs. I did not know anything regarding the situation at the time. I was not told that we had to flee. The lawyer. But did you know in advance regarding the situation through media or through radio broadcasting that uh, the, situa the, situa the situation uh, might be realized soon? The accused, thank you for raising the matter up. The radio was broadcast on the by, and Pol Pot's speech was broadcast on the radio that the Yuan would go deep into the Cambodian territory and there was an appeal for the people to resist the Yuan's invasion. However, at that time, I did not understand it. I did not believe that Pol Pot would flee. That's what I heard. However, on the 6th of January, at around 9 a.m., I was called for work assignment at the Buddhist Institute, Saramaret. When I went there, I did not see Nun Chi, but I instead met Brother Haim, that is Kyusam Porn. And Brother Haim did not even speak to me, even if I sat opposite him. At that time, he said, the June came deep inside the territory, but do not worry because Comrade June and Comrade Sa's teams would resist and compel them back. However, after it happened, then I was shocked of the situation. The lawyer, thank you. And my next question is related also to the final stage of the Democratic Campuchia. As you have just stated, you knew and heard the radio broadcast regarding the Vietnamese troops entering Cambodia to overthrow the Democratic Campuchia regime. So during that time, did you ever think that you wanted to release the remaining prisoners from S-21? 
Did you have uh, such intention? Because the situation at the time was chaotic from the point of view that you just expressed. So again, did you have intention to release the remaining prisoners from S21? Because as you have just stated, that all the orders from the superior to kill or smash the prisoners at S21, you did not satisfy with the orders and the work that you carried out at S21 was done because you were in a situation that you could not avoid it because if you did not do it, then your wife your child, even your relatives or siblings, your parents, would be killed. So at the final stage, did you ever think that now the democratic Cambodia would fall and that you would want to spare the remaining prisoners by releasing them? The accused. I would like to reiterate that after I heard the appeal by Pol Pot, I was numb. I could not believe that the Democratic Cambodia would be defeated because I had strong belief that Pol Pot would be able to defend the country. So with such explanation at 9 a.m. on the 6th of January, by Brother Ham, I still had strong belief. So that was number one. And the second point, for the remaining prisoners that I was ordered to smash, the order came on the second on the, and that I had to smash on the second or the third of January, the latest. And only four prisoners remained for the interrogation. And I think about 14 or 15 prisoners were also spared for providing the service to S21. So there were only about three of the staff who fled with me when I fled. So that was the situation at the time. I did not think that the DK would be defeated and that the remaining prisoners had to be released in order to satisfy my feeling or emotion. This is my response. Thank you, says the lawyer. My next question is related to a point that you raised, that you became aware that after one Wade's arrest and brought to S21, you realized that the close associate of the Democratic Cambodia were all arrested. Did you have any feeling to prepare yourself in order to assist the prisoners, or did you have such a feeling? Because that would be the only opportunity to assist the prisoners at S21 regarding your idealism that you never satisfied with the killings, but you were forced to carry out your duties. The accused. Brother Wan was arrested on the 2nd of November 1978. Therefore, after his arrest, I could not do anything much. I only slept day and night. And on the 2nd or the 3rd of January, I was ordered to took out all the remaining prisoners because there was a rumor that Pol Pot fled from Phnom Penh. 
and I could not understand the situation. I was not allowed to know, and I did not even understand the message broadcast on the radio. So I had no other measures besides the hopelessness that I had. The lawyer, regarding your hopelessness that you had at the final stage, that you only slept day and night, my question is, why did you try to implement the orders from your superior? The accused. I was hopeless. However, it happened at uh, certain stages. First, I felt a little bit hopeless, and toward the end, I felt completely hopeless. At the first, in January 77, when the cadres from the North Zone were arrested, as I reported to the chamber already, I became hopeless. That was the first time. And the second time that I felt hopeless, when Brother Ngaid Yu was arrested and sent to S21. Ngaid Yu Ellis Hong was a Chinese ethnic who supported the Democratic Kampuchea and the CPK from the beginning. And he was arrested and his name appeared in the list. So I became even more hopeless at that stage. I stopped doing my work and I went just to sit at the sculpture's place. And uh, now the time it was on the 2nd of November 78 when Brother Vaughan was arrested. I felt even more, more desperate at the time. And the final stage that I felt so hopeless, it was the 2nd or the 3rd of January 79 when I was ordered to take out all the prisoners. When you first felt hopeless, you would think that when it's going to be your turn. So you try just to stay alive and to follow the order strictly. So that was the only uh, measure and the process of purification in order to survive. This is my response. Thank you, says the lawyer. I have no further questions, Mr. President, and I would like now to give the floor to my colleague in my group. Thank you. Um, the President, please, um, Mr. Alangwena, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, sir. Before I start off with my questions, I would like to say two things. One is that on behalf of my group, I'd like to say that we acknowledge the fact that you have been questioned for more than four days and you have uh, been under an avalanche of questions and you have uh, done your very best to offer answers to all questions. We acknowledge this and thank you for this. Secondly, exactly as uh, you did yesterday and my colleague took note of this, we would be grateful uh, for uh, your continued brevity in your responses. This will make it possible for us to put to you all the questions we would like to ask on behalf of our clients. Thank you in advance. The first subject I want to raise is the subject of TOI. You answered questions from the judge saying that TOI was an interrogator at S21 and that TOI liked to torture. On Tuesday, the 16th of June last, you said the following, responding, uh, this is on page 45 of the transcript. I say this for my colleagues' uh, benefit. I quote, Toy, through his comments, I was satisfied with his work. He was seeking to uh, 
curry favor from me. He introduced the hot method or hot tortures. And you explained in a very comprehensive way what were this hot method and hot tortures. I would like to make sure that I have understood correctly. Is it correct that Toy, uh, who liked, who enjoyed to torture on his own initiative and to uh, carry favor with you, introduced is the person who introduced the toughest method of torture, the hot method, and you accepted this. Is this correct? With his work, he was seeking to uh, curry favor from me. He introduced uh, the hot method or hot tortures. And you explained in a very comprehensive way what were this hot method and hot tortures. I would like to make sure that I have understood correctly. Is it correct that Toy, uh, who liked, who enjoyed to torture on his own initiative and to uh, curry favor with you, introduced is the person who introduced the toughest method of torture, the hot method, and you accepted this. Is this correct? The accused, uh, Mr. Lawyer, uh, these uh, issues uh, we should not uh, blame to uh, our subordinate uh, hundred person. The heart uh, method of uh, torture I have discussed with him. So the heart uh, torture. It had to be a kind of torture, uh, a continuing torture. Uh, it was my instruction. But the behavior of the interrogator at S21 uh, were not the same. Uh, Comrade Toy from uh, Division 703, he has the intention, uh, tendency to uh, the heart uh, torture. Pragnan from M13, who also had the tendency to the heart torture, and uh, the, the, he used uh, mainly the heart um, method of torture, uh, whereas Comrade Pon, uh, the interrogator who received uh, the training from me, he rarely uh, uh, made any uh, decision beyond our uh, order. So um, another one, her brother Momnai, uh, who uh, who was always uh, uh, follow the order and rarely uh, commit any torture. In conclusion, it's uh, it's only uh, me who can uh, allow or authorize anyone to to torture, but. The characters of the interrogator are different. Uh, Tui had a different character. Um, Pon had another different, and uh, Mom Nai has another uh, different. That's all I can tell you. Mr. Werner. Returning to the subject of Toy, why? Would you have given Toy such uh, prominence in S21 when you knew that he had this uh, sadistic uh, tendency? Why did you give him such prominence in S21? The accused, uh, Mr. Lawyer, they uh, had no uh, mistake or fault uh, for uh, removal. We uh, do not uh, remove him. So four other uh, interrogators who failed to 
uh, succeed in interrogation and then uh, we send the victim to Tui, but Tui can uh, do that. And Tui reported to me that uh, the, the prisoner uh, did confess. Yes, we admitted that it's a uh, wrongdoing. Let me give an example, the confession of Siet Chai al Yastum. So after the interrogation by Tui and Siet Chai uh, al Yastum, uh, he confessed that he committed a rape against his daughter. It seemed to me at that time it's uh, uh, too, too extreme. So, um, and if um, the torture caused the victim to, to death, uh, it is a, a matter, it's a, a problem. But if he failed to do that, he uh, Tui has the strong supporters. Uh, he, he was from uh, Division 703. So in principle, so if uh, the torture caused the victim uh, to, to, to die, it is a, a, a serious uh, fall that we can remove him. On Tuesday, the 16th of June, says Mr. Werner, This is page 6162 of the transcript. I said this for the benefit of my colleague. You said to the judge that young interrogators could be extremely, could be very extreme. You said that some of them had no mastery, self-control, and you said that some of them were cruel. Sir, do you accept, do you agree that by giving prominence to a sadistic person such as Toy, who, as you have admitted yourself, enjoy torturing, you were encouraging younger interrogators in S21 to emulate him and to inflict uh, suffering that was beyond uh, what was necessary. The accused, uh, Mr. Lawyer, uh, uh, you said that um, uh, I push them further. I never do that. But um, I continue to trust him and give instruction and advice uh, to him uh, more or less that uh, allow him uh, to feel like the way of torture and to con continue that torture. That is true. Uh, in addition to that, uh, those who have the tendency to torture, there were two. One is Comrade uh, Toy uh, from uh, Division 703, and another one was Nan. Nan from uh, M13. Mr. Werner, I would like to ask a question about uh, hunger, starvation. You were questioned quite extensively on this issue, and you stated last week on Monday, 15th of June, this is page 98 of the transcript. You said that some people died of hunger in S21 because of the lack of food. And you also said the following. Still on the 15th, this is page 89 of the transcript. You said, generally speaking, there was not enough to eat throughout the country for the whole population. It was worse for detainees. So it was a real uh, general policy of uh, the Communist Party of Kampuchea. And the judge was asking you whether you were aware of the implementation of such a policy, and you answered, yes, I knew. And this is still a painful memory for me, but I had no other, I could do nothing else. I had no, other, no alternative. Now, sir, in the file, there is at least one example that shows that you could have had an alternative. You stated uh, with, on the 20th 27th of March 2008, D63, 
and for my colleague, the ref French reference is 00178037. This is when you spoke to the co-investigating judge. You were being asked you were being asked the following by the co-investigating judges. You have explained that in 1978, the surplus in rice production from Praesar had been handed over to the Central Committee. Why was that decision taken, and how did you know that there was a surplus? More specifically, why did you decide to hand over that surplus to the Central Committee rather than to use it for normal uh, diet, normal, uh, a normal diet for the staff, since at the time rations were insufficient. Your answer was as follows. I don't recall whether it was Pal or Hoi who informed me. That particular year there had been a flood and we were short of rice. I told Nunchia that I could provide rice and he appeared surprised. I wanted to help the other units. I also wanted to promote the reputation of Presar and S21. As regards the food regime or diet, it was decided on by superiors, and I could not modify anything in this respect. So this is my question to you now, sir. Why did you hand over that rice surplus to Nunchia when you knew that the detainees in S21 were very literally dying of hunger? The accused, Mr. Lawyer, uh, the story I told to the co-investigating church are uh, correct. In 1978, S21 and uh, Presor uh, produced uh, uh, lots of rice and there's a lot of rice surplus, uh, several tons of rice in surplus. So I, I did send her the rice to to Anka through uh, Uncle Nguyen. Uncle Nguyen had someone to to take uh, those rice. However, uh, the story that I would like to tell here is that the crimes against humanity, it's uh, everyone uh, falling into that situation, including uh, myself, that I have enough rice in my hands, but I dare not uh, take those rice to use for the uh, prisoners who are detained in uh, Phnom Penh. Uh, actually, it was not a prison. It was a uh, the place to store people before killing. So I uh, failed to uh, use that rice to uh, support those who were at Presor in the re-education camp, and I uh, never there to to change any food ration for uh, the prisoner. Uh, these, uh, those are the crime that um, uh, every one of uh, the cadre, including me, uh, to follow uh, the uh, the policy, especially the policy regarding the uh, food ration. So, um, uh, this is one of the crime that I am uh, the one who uh, responsible for that. Uh, in the spirit of uh, the crime of the crime against humanity. So I admit and I accept that crime. Mr. Werner, last week, in response to one of the judges, you explained in detail why, according to you, And th there, were length, there was a lengthy dialogue between you and Judge Lavergne, and you said the following, page 91 of the transcript on Monday 15th. I had no alternative uh, than to avoid having contact with the prisoners. When I saw them, when I met them, I was, I was troubled. And the same day, 
few minutes later, you said the following. I was afraid of seeing the suffering of people under my authority. I would have been shocked if I had been to see them. I closed my eyes, I closed my ears. But I did not want to see the situation as it really was. I was not authorizing myself to see or hear anything. The interpreter would like to ask Mr. Werner to speak a sl more slowly for the fullness of interpretation and for the record. Now, consequently, says Mr. Werner, you were not going into this prison where people were literally dying of hunger. The President, uh, please uh, speak more slowly, Mr. Lawyer, uh, to, uh, for a proper record. My apologies, Your Honor, says Mr. Werner. So I shall resume. Uh, so I summarize uh, basically the reason why you were not going into the general prison, the place where, as you yourself have explained, the place where people were dying of hunger, torture, illness, and probably fear. The reason why you were not going there was because it would have affected you emotionally. Uh, sir, we believe that the truth resides elsewhere, and I would like to explain to you briefly a different hypothesis. I would like to submit this to your consideration. After this, I shall ask a question, all of this on behalf of the civil parties, one of whom is a survivor of S21. We believe that when you were the director, the, the president, the chairman of S21. Everything you did was done in order to satisfy your superiors, Son Sen, then Nunchia. You went to the artists' workshops because you wanted the sculptures to move ahead uh, and to please Pol Pot. You followed uh, the interrogations of the Vietnamese because you wanted the radio broadcasts to be of the right quality to satisfy the upper echelon. And you spent lots of time, including at night, poring over Professions in order to draw up the right lists, once again, to please your superiors. And we think the reason for which you were not uh, going often to the general prison was to go there would have been of no uh, usefulness for you, that the suffering of the victims was of no relevance to you, had uh, nothing to do with your agenda of pleasing your superiors, and consequently you were indifferent to that suffering. We believe that suffering was of no interest, of no value to you, and consequently did not have any, uh, you were not touched, you were not affected emotionally by it. What would you say about this today? The accused, Mr. Lawyer, your proposition toward myself, toward my emotion, was fundamentally correct. I, in fact, try to satisfy my superior. I push my subordinates to work better in order to satisfy my superior. I try to annotate the confessions in, with the intention to satisfy my superior. So everything that I did was to satisfy my superior. I attempted to work to the best effort in order to reach the requirements of the superior. So I acknowledge what you said and the crimes that I committed in the name of the chairman of the S21 office. However, however, I would like to state that I did not go and see my friends 
who were detained there. I knew a lot of people who were detained at S21, but I did not go and meet them. Yesterday, Mr. Hong Kong Soon showed me a name of the person whom I knew, but I did not go and see him. And the person, Chung Chu Liang, was also my friend, and I did not go there. And another person, Tiang Ti Ni, was also not a party member, but I knew they entered S21, but I did not go to see them because I did not know what to say to them. And a, a number of my friends were also entered S21, including Chai Kim Ho, So, based on the propositions and conclusions and Alang Wenner said whether I was covered and yes, I acknowledge I was covered and even beyond that because I betrayed my friends, my teachers in order to survive myself. And here before the chamber, I am responsible for the crimes I committed. And I would like the Cambodian people to see me that I acknowledge the crimes I committed during that time. Mr. Werner, we believe that indeed you were successful in pleasing your superiors. And I'd like to present you with a hypothesis that was uh, brought up by Dr. Etchison when he came to testify here. And uh, he explained why one of, one of the main reasons, according to him, and he explained why the, one of the main reasons why you were promoted to lead S21 and to replace NAT, and this is what he said during the hearing on the 28th of May 2009, on page 20 of the transcript. I was in fact asking him questions myself concerning these lists of enemies. And by speaking about these lists of enemies, this is what he said. And I will quote, I will read the transcript and quote. What I understand is that it was a practice that was developed and fine-tuned by the accused himself and that the accused and his superiors believed that this practice was so useful that this is a reason why the accused was promoted to the position of chairman of S21. So my question is the following. Is it so that you were promoted to the position of chairman of S21 because you were able to please your superiors so efficiently and, and, and your, your superiors brought you these enemy lists and they promoted you for this reason because you were able to please your superiors so efficiently. The accused, Mr. Lawyer, the proposition made by Alang Werner, I would put that aside for now. I want to talk about the time that I tried to satisfy my superior and only want to talk on this matter at the moment. I indeed tried to work day and night without fearing of exhaustion in order to satisfy my superior. My boss used me day and night and I just followed it, followed the order. And I would like to say that the words used in the party line on the spirit of invention, anybody could invent things, but it would has to be conformed to the party line, otherwise you would be accused of being a traitor. So that was the necessity. You can be inventive. And yes, there was invention at S21 in order to fulfill the requirements. So I, myself, including 
the interrogator cartridge has to do it following the spirit of fast attack, fast success. And indeed, that what I did at the time. My ability to invent things in order, to, however, with, it falls within the framework of the party line. So that was my attempt to do my work. I apologize if I could not answer fully to your question. Mr. Vernard, you explained before this chamber several times that even important people were arrested and imprisoned at S-28 following what had been said in the confessions. And you yourself, in fact, were implicated in at least two confessions, and important confessions. And I would like to refer what you said to the co-investigating judges on the 1st of April 2008, document D-6... Zero, zero, one, uh, and it's document D67, and you said this on page 4 and 5, you said that two people uh, incriminated me in their confessions. Kei Kim Kuot, and I apologize for the pronunciation, and Von Vet. And each time I preferred keeping the text the way it was. If I had intervene, I would have lost my face. In, in, and you're asking me why King, Kim Huot stated that I was interested in democratic and liberal ideas. And I, and I believe that it, it is because I, was, I had been his student in primary school in 1956 and in 1957. And he gave me two books uh, which did not follow the party's line. And my question is the following. Why did nothing happen to you, although you had been implicated twice in confessions, as you said yourself, and by very important people? Was it because you were protected by Son Sen and by Nguyen Shea, who admired your zeal? The accused, Mr. Lawyer, the confession of Brother Kim Hoot on, my, on me was an old activity from the 1956-57. Therefore, the upper echelon disregarded that information. And as for Brother Wand, everybody knew that he used to supervise me and that I used to pay respect to him. Everybody knew that. So his confession on me, I was not sure, but what I can remember is that he wrote my name in his last page of the confession. So I, I, I did not care. I think it's up to the discretion of Uncle Noon. I did not make any changes to it. Because if I did, then people would notice that, oh, maybe I deleted my name because I do not want to be implicated. Because I did not make any uh, amendments to other people, then how come I make amendments when my name was referred to? So if I were to die, yes, let it be. However, the fact that I survived because I ins insisted that I was honest and loyal to them. If I was asked, then I would explain all the historical activities. And if you want me to say that, I can say all those things in chronological order. Mr. Werner, you have answered my question. Thank you. I just would like to uh, bring up two extra topics. The first is in relation to what you stated last week here in court. You said several times 
that you were collaborating tightly with Sun Sen on the 15th of June and on page 26 you explained that everything that you were doing it, you were doing it in tight collaboration with Sun Sen and that he knew exactly what you were doing and that he, want, he was soliciting your opinion all the time. And the next day, on Tuesday the 16th, you explained on page 49 of the transcript, you explained once again that Sun Sen would follow your work very closely and give you instructions. Therefore, I would like to have you present with you uh, with a different version so that you can comment this. A completely a different version that was presented by Dr. Etchison concerning this issue. And this is what Dr. Etchison said. And it's so page 98, therefore, of the transcript of May 27th, 2009. This is, therefore, what Dr. Etchison said. I'd like, I remind that Sun Sen was a member of the Standing Committee of the Party, in that he was the Vice Prime Minister of Defense, in that he was uh, the head of uh, the General Staff of the Army of, Kampu of Democratic Kampuchea. Therefore, he had numerous responsibilities, and therefore, he was probably somebody who was extremely busy, and I'd like to skip a few lines and continue further down. However, when I examine the list that was put together by the co-prosecutor's office, the list of prisoners at S21, we noticed that several individuals could not be considered as important prisoners in terms of their responsibilities or in terms of their hierarchical rank. And, and now, if I go to line 19, a, a very high number of these people ended up in torture chambers and ended up being ex executed based on accusations in, stating that they were members of the CIA or the KGB. So it seems to me difficult to believe that someone who had national level responsibilities of such importance as Sun Sen would dedicate time to interrogating or to executing uh, these kinds of uh, prisoners. And my question is the following, therefore, well, so isn't it the case, as Dr. Etchison said, that Sun Sen, concerning people, that Sun Sen was not at all implicated in interrogations that he was not at all implicated in confessions, was not at all implicated in executions. And in reality, it was you, the person who took the decisions, practically without any supervision concerning interrogations, concerning confessions, and, and concerning the treatment of those who were not important at S21. Would you agree with that? The accuser, Mr. Lawyer, I do not want to make my comment on the report of Dr. Greg Atchison. However, I would like to state that, to state my point of view regarding the work at S21. The S21 work, I did it following the order of my superior. So all the line of implementation was instructed by my superior. It did not mean that he was so busy and I had to implement it. Of course, I acknowledge my superior had a lot of tasks because he was a member of the Central Committee. He was the seventh member of the Standing Committee, and in the governmental rank, he was the third Deputy Prime Minister. And in the military affairs, he was the Chief of the General Staff and also the Minister of Defense and Security. 
He was in charge of national security throughout the country. I have a document to prove this point. My apology, I uh, do not want to read the document. It was the minutes of the Central Committee meeting on the 19th of October 75. It was on page 1. Sun Sen was responsible for the general staff and security. So, indeed, my superior had a lot of tasks. But who had influence on who? My superior would not allow me to act freely. He met me every day. He monitored my work on the telephone every day and gave instructions on me on every aspect. And on another matter regarding the arrest and the execution and the interrogation, it was stated in the decision of the 30th of March 1976. Who had the right to decide to smash. And at, at, at the end, for the center army, it was the general staff who had the authority to smash. So for the general staff, he had the authority to decide. So these four groups were clearly assigned their responsibilities and the authorities. If they made the decision, then the respective unit had to arrest those people and send to the police office and for the police office, upon receiving those people, they had to interrogate and torture them for confessions. So we had to follow their work, otherwise we would be regarded as a traitor. So the principle was clearly stated, and he met me every day in order to monitor on the line of implementation. This doesn't mean that what I did was not known by Sun Sen although he had a lot of tasks on his hands. He was very clever. And he was 12 years older than me. So this is my response to you. This doesn't mean that I put the blame on my superior, but this is the reality. And what was my responsibility? and the process of the order and the line from my superior to me. Mr. Werner, I have a, a last question, and then I will be over. We spoke, a, there was a lot of discussion with the Judge Laverne in particular and with the President last week concerning the six lists of people who apparently were released. And you gave us a lot of explanations on this, so I do not need to go back to this. But these lists apparently prove that more than 160 people were released. And, and your statement, despite the existence of these lists, remains that these lists do not reflect reality, and that in reality nobody was released from S21. And let me please present to you a, a hypothesis for you to consider, and, and I am doing this on behalf of all of my clients who lost relatives at S21. This is my hypothesis. The reason why, still today, and despite the presence of this list, you refuse to admit that people were released from S21, more than 160, well, the reason is that these lists demonstrate that it was not impossible to release somebody from S21, and this leads to an embarrassing question for you, which is, why you, why didn't you release people uh, at S21 who were innocent and whom you knew were innocent? Do you accept this? The accused. Mr. Lawyer, I would like to clarify the six lists into two separate uh, parts. One list is a list made during 
It was made in November 1977. At that time, I was already the secretary of I-71, and there were 100 people who were decided by the party that these 920 division people had to be smashed. They were combatants of Division 920. When they arrived at I-21 on the 21st of March 77, and Comrade Ho, whose mind was still thinking about the release by the party as a trickery thing, so he said the release was done on the 26th of November. That's what he wrote, 26th of November 77. After I saw that, I make my annotation in red ink. So you can refer to the document, or if you need, I could ask for permission from the president to show my annotation regarding that list. Toward the end of the list, Comrade Ho annotated that after he, uh, he implemented my order from the superior, he annotated that all the names were taken out, and then the date. And the list is the 59 slash 4, point 10 or something, or point 8. Approved a number of matters. And on the 30th of March 1976, on the, the first paragraph that um, uh, the trial chamber uh, knew that well, uh, in that uh, the right to make decision inside and outside of the rank. Uh, in April on the 19th, the 20. Uh, the 21s, uh, the central, uh, the standing committee uh, hold uh, three days uh, meetings, and uh, Pol Pot uh, try to suspend Nats uh, from his uh, position. Uh, the documents uh, stated about the decision of uh, Pol Pot, it's on D00, uh, I would like to read uh, the page which uh, stated that Pol Pot uh, did not uh, trust not. It's on page uh, 00, uh, 019. Uh, 145, uh, ERN again, uh, 00, 019, uh, 145. Uh, the writing uh, was uh, on this page, uh, Comrade Mien and Comrade Nat uh, were only uh, a mobile cadre uh, supporting the general staff in the uh, uh, operation uh, mission. Uh, they were no longer uh, has the direct supervision on the force. If uh, comparing to uh, the document dated the 9 October 1975, uh, from the beginning, uh, Pol Pot uh, did not uh, trust uh, Chakra, but now uh, Pol Pot uh, did not trust Nat. Uh, let me read uh, the, the content from that document. Uh, from the beginning, uh, Pol Pot uh, praised uh, Division 12. It's the former name of uh, Division 703. Uh, the, the attacking line, uh, uh, Division 03, was very good at that. Um, and when he's talking about Chan Chakrai, if he cannot uh, control uh, them, 
uh, we ask them to come and work at the general staff. For example, uh, Comrade Mien, Comrade Mien was a Chan Chakrai, uh, came maybe from uh, to work in the polit politics uh, office, or any of the comrades should be selected to to be the secretary of the division. So um, uh, on the 9th of October 1975, Pol Pot praised very much uh, the NAT uh, division. And later, NAT and Chan Chak Kray was uh, the suspect uh, before uh, the party. And they were no longer trust. And, uh, some of their tasks were removed. That's all I can say. Uh, the lawyers, uh, thank you. I would like to come to question number nine. Um, uh, uh, previously, I uh, listened to your explanation. Uh, there were only four groups of people. It was the standing committee and the secretary of the zone and the Secretary of the Central Committee and the Secretary of the General Staff who have the right to uh, smash or to arrest. Uh, do you agree with me on that? Uh, the next question. Those who had no right to smash like Nat and Koitun, but he made decision, but later the party uh, take action against him uh, subsequently, do you agree with me? The accused, thank you, I agreed. The lawyer, so uh, you have a different uh, conclusion than me. So what is your uh, conclusions? Uh, please keep it brief. The accused, uh, Mr. Lawyer, uh, two of your conclusions I agree. And I would like to give my conclusion uh, by dividing uh, the background of the implementation of the uh, party line at S21. Uh, the first is was when Nat was uh, chairman, especially uh, the uh, unilaterally uh, arrest of people and about the fall arrest, but it is not really uh, the fall release, but it was not true. And the, the purge or the screening of the force um, to base on the uh, honestly uh, policy at S21, uh, there was the uh, secretary and deputy secretary, and then we request for the approval uh, from the standing committee, for example, uh, document ES, and next, uh, C18.81, uh, that I uh, noted on the, back, the background or the biography of Comrade Mutheng after approved by the Standing Committee. And number two, in case of specification, we have the agreement to transfer some of the combatant from the interrogator to uh, the combat to be Combatant at Presor, including Chun Tom in uh, E5 slash uh, 2.4 at page ERN 00 uh, 28 uh, 28 uh, 010. Uh, when there is an application uh, to those who are in the unit, uh, we increase the uh, vigilance and to defend and request for decision from the ONCA when needed. For example, in uh, document E5 slash uh, 2, point 52 at pages at page 00 T uh, 226. Uh, uh, 779. Uh, we never uh, make any decision to arrest anyone without uh, the decision from the standing committee. That's all. Uh, Mr. Lawyer, I will ask another three questions. Amongst uh, uh, the uh, 12,000 uh, people that was smashed at S21. Uh, how many of them that you uh, smashed with your own hands? The accused, uh, 
Uh, Mr. Lawyer, I would like to uh, confirm again that even though at M13 or S21, I never kill any uh, body, anyone uh, with my hands. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Lawyer, you said that you never kill anyone with your own hand. Uh, why, why do you uh, accept or declare to accept the responsibility for those crimes? The accused. Uh, Mr. Lawyer, uh, these crimes uh, uh, came from the uh, party line of the CPK. I was uh, one of the members of the party assigned to uh, manage S21, and it was a mechanism, a criminal uh, mechanism that killed uh, 12,380 people. Anyone who refused to implement, implement that uh, party line, I will report and later they will end up with arrest. I was the one who, the, who, who was the master uh, in charge of implementing the CPK policy at uh, S21. So if there was uh, no one like me who do that, the, the matter will uh, go in a different uh, direction. The lawyer, uh, thank you. So you order to your subordinate to, to, to smash the victim. It's uh, the 12,380 uh, people. So what were the orders uh, from your superior? Uh, please explain to the court. So. Who, who were your superior, your upper echelon, to make order to you so that the world and the public uh, will know well about those uh, criminals? The accused, uh, Mr. Lawyers, I uh, explained uh, the chamber about the political uh, party lines. Any uh, one who consider as enemy uh, shall be smashed. Any that anyone who was considered a friend uh, should be supported. So all kind of support will be uh, available for the friends. Now, these are the political party line. No one would dare to uh, violate. So anyone respect and obey to the party line, including Pol Pot himself. Uh, so no one uh, can violate uh, the party line, but uh, those who uh, directly order and manage uh, directly uh, over me uh, from the beginning was uh, my professor Sun Sen and later uh, Uncle Nguyen, uh, Nguyen Chia, uh, who was my uh, immediate uh, superior. For example, uh, the document uh, D 159 slash 2 uh, point 10 that order me uh, 100 victim from uh, unit uh, 200, uh, 920. So I have no way to uh, to go around. So there was the the order from the upper echelon. So if I have failed to do that, when there's a report, I will be uh, killed uh, for that. Uh, the lawyer, uh, please explain again. Your superior was Nguyen Chi and Sun Sen who uh, order you so that you can order your subordinate to do so. So who were, who were the uh, superior of uh, Sun Sen or Nguyen Chi? So the biggest uh, uh, the big boss in that time was Pol Pot. That's what I can say. As for other zone and other branch, it's different. Um, it was uh, like um, the provision in uh, stated in the document dated uh, the 20 uh, the 30s of uh, uh, my uh, 2000 uh, uh, 1976. Uh, lawyer, uh, you were. The chairman of S21, uh, 
uh, how many victims that you use the torture by your own hands again how many of them among the 12,380 victims the accused uh, mr. lawyers I uh, can tell you based on my recollections if I am not mistaken I uh, torture only Chin Yu only one uh, when I was the uh, the deputy secretary of the uh, the office that's all I can say uh, uh, lawyer uh, thank you uh, I would like to give uh, the floor to Mr. Uh, Francois Roux to continue uh, his question uh, the president uh, please Mr. Francois Roux the floor is your Thank you, President. And uh, I want to thank all the parties for having agreed to bring forward the uh, trial management meeting. I consequently have very few questions to ask at this point. Doig, when your lawyers suggested to the investigating judges the organizing of a reconstitution, a reenactment in Chung Ek and S21. You agreed to take part in such a reenactment. Am I correct? The accused, Mr. Lawyer, Yes, I agreed to the request voluntarily at the time. Mr. Roux, and in February 2008, on one particular morning, 30 years after the events, you went back into S21. S21 that you had left in January 1979. Is this correct? The accused. Mr. Lawyer, I went to S21, but before I Went there. I went to Chiang Ai. Previously, I only went to Chiang Ai for one time for a very short visit. So when I went to Chiang Ai, I was shocked and moved because it was the place where a lot of people were killed. When I went to Chiang Ai, I confessed to my people that children might be swung against the tree. Also, at the same time, at a place where the photos were display, I saw the photo of Professor Pinkton. Before, I did not even believe that he would be at S21. So I was speechless when I saw his photo with my own eyes. I saw his handwriting in his biography. I saw his handwriting in his biography. 
I did not see or read his biography before, but I believed it was his handwriting. So at that time, the words that I protested that Professor Pengton was not detained at S21, I had to reject that because now it, it appeared to be true. That is the second point. And for the third point, every time I recall, I, it was so painful that the lives lost at June 8, so it required me to pray to God to forgive those souls. And when I arrived at S21, I was shocked for the numerous things happened there. I saw the victims or the survivors, three of them, who stood before me. What happened in the past came back into my mind. Another particular recollection was the photo of a female prisoner having her baby in her arms. I was so shocked and moved. And I stood before the victims being moved by what happened. I made a speech for the souls of those who died. This is something that I can never forget. That is the trip to Chuk H and S21 in Phnom Penh. The, there were a lot of uh, shocking incidents happening at S21, but this is my brief response to your question. Metro Mr. President, at this juncture, the defense would like to request the viewing of three minutes of the film, the video of the reenactment. I clarify immediately that there is no, no witness, no victim appears in this excerpt. There is only the accused. I also want to make clear that this particular film was shot upon the request of the investigating judges. The whole reenactment was filmed. It is all uh, in the case file, and the excerpt that we wish to show now is the particular moment when Doig has wanted, wanted to take to, to speech to, to, to speak to speak to the victims and and he could not continue and you will see why you will understand why when viewing this excerpt can we ask the uh, av people to uh, do the needful please the president do you have the reference a reference number to such material? Oui, bien sûr, Monsieur le Président. Yes, of course, Your Honor. D48 slash 2. D48 slash 2.
Kang. The President, the audio and visual officer. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Met Trivu, uh, has the transcript of uh, whatever is said on this excerpt of the film been made available to the interpreters? Are you able to assist us with that? Mr. Wu, Your Honour, very little is actually said in this excerpt, very few words, and whatever is said is said in French and in Khmer. Well, uh, in that case, uh, it seems that we can continue with the showing of the um, excerpt, but if the interpreters have any problems, then perhaps we can uh, deal with that if and when it happens. Thank you. The audio and visual section, you cannot proceed with the video clip, D48-2. Can you do that? Premièrement, je pense aux victimes mal, mal, à ma chanceuse et à leur famille. Qui est un live man rong avec le mien. Rong qui est rond de cam. Rong qui est pramat me nier que l'on sent à mon soir rock mon off. Mon mon bac bong qui vit pour l'autre son cas. Je me viens beaucoup d'actualité. Elle avait subi euh, d'innombrables misères, tortures et insultes très inhumaines avant de mourir. Euh... Your Honours, there is no sound reaching the interpretation booth, so whatever is, uh, perhaps you are receiving sound, but we are not.
Judge uh, Jubin Lei, regarding this, the lawyer for the accused asked that a statement be read out at first. Since the victims and the witnesses have not yet been identified, I would only like to ask the civil party lawyers for their opinions. If there are any, they should be expressed. The President, I notice the presence of the Defense Council. Avant même de commencement de notre procédure. Donc, ici, je voudrais demander l'avis des avocats de la victime ou de la victime. Quelle est votre observation concernant cette demande Also, I would like the co-prosecutor to add a party of the case. The president. The, the defense counsel, you take the floor. You, the, this, is, this is enough, I think, uh, Your Honours. I just had one last question to put to the accused. I would like to make clear that the statement of the accused was, the reading of it was suspended during the beginning, right at the beginning of that reenactment. And there is another uh, footy piece of footage that is much longer and which we shall um, submit to you later on that took place on the evening of the reenactment day. Uh, and at that point, the accused uh, spoke to the victims, and the victims were in a position to answer. But this, we will show this only once the victims will have uh, offered testimony. Duik, you have just seen this excerpt, so I have just one more question for you at this point. One last question. Since the tragedy of S21, since that time, have you made offerings for the souls of the victims? The accused, Mr. Lawyer, in 1975, what happened then was a shocking news that we all tried to avoid. And in 1979, whatever happened, we could not avoid it. We saw the killings, the deaths, and the separations. And finally, all the people at S21 all died. So there was no longer S21 unit. Some fled to their native homes, but majority of them died, including my younger sibling, my nephew, the wife of Brother Mom Nai and the, bra the wife of Kamrat Pond. So I was left alone with my wife and two children. At that time, I became even more sorrowful. I didn't know about my wife's feeling. She 
told me that the last few days she really thought of her father at the time. And I told her I also thought of the father. And my wife asked, what could we do then? And I said, we could pray, make an offering for him. But then she said, how could we make an offering or pray for him because we were not sure whether he's dead or not. But I said, we had just to do it in order to ask for forgiveness from my father who gave me birth on the 17th of November 1942. He gave me life to do good deeds to the nation and the people, but I did it the other way around. So I make an offering each year. First, I ask for, for forgiveness to my parents, then I ask for forgiveness to my, par to my teachers, and finally, I ask for forgiveness for all the victims of the crimes. I do this all the time. I have done it until I was imprisoned because that was that the time I had no ability to make any offering. However, in November each year, I would not be able to do anything. I had to do something in order to calm my feeling. And another time, when I was Christian and I prayed to the God, I would ask for forgiveness from all the souls of the victims. And I prayed for them. This is my response to your question. And finally, I would seek the President's leave to specify on one point that is on the issue of Professor Pinkton. And because the, his daughter, Notary, is here in the court. So if I have the leave from the President, I would uh, say something regarding to that. The President, you still have the final opportunity to express or make your statement toward the end of the proceedings. So before the close of the trial, we would give you an opportunity to have your final statement expressing to the victims, the families of the victims, the Cambodian people as well as the world people. And then we would make our judgment. But right now that you are not permitted to make your statement. The defense counsel, do you have any more questions for your client? Mr. Wu, I am finished. Thank you, Mr. President. President, thank you. Defense Council. Now it is time for our lunch break. However, before the break, the Chamber would like to notify the public and the parties that this afternoon the Chamber will be having a, a trial management meeting which is in camera, so the media and the public are not permitted to attend the meeting. The meeting is aims to find e solutions to all the technical issues faced by the chamber and the parties. And we will now adjourn for lunch break and we'll resume this afternoon by having the trial management meeting from 1.30 p.m.
Security officers take the accused back to the waiting facility and bring him back before 1.30 p.m. this afternoon. He, oh, he implemented my order from the superior. He annotated that all the names were taken out and then the date. And the list is the 59 slash 4, point 10 or something or point 8. The list is a D159 slash 4.10. Mm. Yes, it is clear uh, there was no one to list uh, under this list. It is under my direct uh, control. I, I corrected Comrade Hoare, and these are uh, the names in the list uh, on the second part. The second part of the list name uh, D57 uh, uh, Annex 003, or called D fourteen hundred twenty four. There were four uh, forty nine uh, prisoners on that list. Uh, the list uh, entitled uh, the prisoner who were released uh, in in uh, uh, Division seven o three. So why this list uh, come to S twenty one? the evidence uh, to show that it, uh, the, the list is at, at S21 is TSL4, uh, 430, uh, to prove that it, uh, the list is, exists at S21, and we uh, pay more attention to this list, and we come a bit further, and we'll look uh, to uh, the matter and the works that I did with my superior. And there were two uh, people who uh, were implicated, in the 18 and the 36, that not, not reported to the superior that uh, these two victims uh, planned to, uh, to kill the superior, saying that um, uh, they ran away when uh, the car was driving fast and flash. So, and he said that if you arrested anyone based on your personal uh, security uh, concern, it's uh, the worst case. And it's a rare case that um, um, the superior blame the, the chief uh, in front of the deputy chief. It's a, uh, rarely happen. So uh, the one on the 18 and the uh, 36. So it is a uh, fall in the, the trick uh, by not. Uh, it is signed on the 20th of December, 1975. The 20th of December, 1975, uh, the people in the country, uh, the farmer were in the groups co cooperative and uh, the unit uh, the labor, so uh, where could we release them to? So uh, anything should uh, 
should be done through the Anka. So that was not Anka at that time. So no one has, uh, has the right to release anybody. So when uh, it considered as enemy, n never been released uh, for the, the case. So uh, when uh, Nat uh, killed someone and he, f he was fearful that he wanted to uh, conceal his act, and at least uh, four or five of them were also the same that uh, contained uh, the name of uh, people, and at the two list uh, contained five uh, victims each. So these uh, people on the list, uh, based on my analysis, I understand well. Uh, the term used that uh, release, I, uh, I said, and I told you that uh, my crimes against uh, 10,000 people, I don't use these two uh, uh, foolish uh, list to, uh, to hide. So you cannot hide an elephant in a room. So there's a two list. It's on it's a small, small leaf from the tree. You cannot uh, hide the elephant with using this leaf. So I don't admit it. It's a, a release. So not, it was not who killed those people. So what should I uh, say? So in conclusion, for the six leaves, um, they were all uh, killed. So. Uh, the release under uh, the five list, it's not true. So I, uh, I said it's uh, for a removal. It is uh, the removal, but it is a false list of prisoner. Mr. Werner, I do not have any further questions. Thank you for accepting to answer my question. The President, uh, the trial chambers uh, declare uh, the break for uh, 20 minutes uh, until uh, 10 minutes to 11, and we'll uh, come back uh, in session. And uh, the next uh, uh, session will be uh, the floor for the defense counsel to ask questions uh, in relation to the facts. Um, for uh, the trial. The President, please be seated. The trial chamber is now back in session. And uh, please, uh, Mr. Uh, Franz Warus, uh, the floor is yours. Monsieur le Président, c'est Maître Karsavut. Your Honor, Mr. Karsavut will ask questions first. However, at this juncture, I would like to officially inform the Chamber of the fact that for family-related reasons and reasons that are painful to me, I am obliged to leave tonight. 
I would consequently like to ask the Chamber whether it might be possible to have uh, the court management meeting this afternoon once we will have completed our questioning. We believe that jointly with Mr. Karsavut, the questioning on our part can be completed by 12 o'clock or possibly by 2 p.m. We may need a little while in the afternoon, but uh, we would certainly have finished our questioning by 2 o'clock this afternoon. This is my request to the chamber. So that uh, would it be would it be possible to have uh, the um, court management meeting brought forward so that we could hold it this afternoon? Thank you. The president, um, Mr. Co-prosecutor, uh, do you have any comments uh, in relation to uh, the? Uh, request by the different council uh, to uh, ch to the change uh, of our agenda on the uh, to move the uh, trial management chamber from uh, the 25th of uh, uh, June to uh, this afternoon. So, based on our calculation of time, we hope that uh, we can finish uh, before uh, the time frame. And he has. Uh, raise uh, about his uh, family problem that he uh, he need to go back. So, what is your comments on this, um, Mr. Prosecutors? Um, the prosecutor, thank you, Mr. President. The co-prosecutors agree to that um, uh, request. Uh, the president, um, the civil party lawyers, uh, do you have any comments? Uh, in response to the request by uh, the def different counsel, uh, Mr. Franz Forus, about uh, the switch of the uh, trial management uh, meeting uh, to uh, to be held uh, this afternoon because he has a, a family uh, problem that uh, he need to uh, go back uh, tonight. Jonas, of course, we, we could not um, talk among ourselves um, because we just learned the news, so maybe it would be good to ask each team, but on behalf of my team, of course, we do not object. Um, I would not object, by, but I would uh, like to reserve then our right to take a position on all these questions that were raised uh, concerning uh, the removal of witnesses from uh, the witness list. We would like to reserve our right uh, at some points to give a later uh, statement on this and not this afternoon because uh, we have not yet enough time to prepare and work uh, on the proposition that the Chamber has given to us yesterday. Uh, lawyer Kim uh, Mr. President, uh, we are the uh, civil party lawyer for Group 3. We have no objection to the request by the Defense Council, but uh, we request that uh, the meeting should uh, last longer, uh, should start it from 1 or 1.30 uh, through to uh, at the end, so uh, rather than start uh, start at uh, two. So, if uh, the defense counsel uh, try to finish uh, your question uh, this morning, so that we have enough time uh, for uh, the trial management meeting uh, this afternoon. Thank you. Uh, lawyer Kung uh, Mr. President, uh, Your Honours. Um, as a lawyer for the civil party group number four, uh, I have no uh, objection to his request, but we should note that uh, uh, 
the defense counsel should try uh, their best, uh, their uh, professions uh, to defend uh, his clients uh, uh, because um, yeah, he said that uh, when uh, uh, the prosecution saw the documents uh, uh, without showing to the uh, defense counsel in advance, uh, but in fact the documents uh, were in uh, the case file, so uh, it's uh, uh, the gap in uh, uh, the defense counsel that um, uh, one of uh, the requests uh, by uh, the defense counsel. The President, uh, thank you uh, for your comments on this matter. And based on uh, what uh, the party have just raised, and there were uh, no uh, main objections, then the trial chamber decided to uh, to uh, move uh, the uh, trial ch management met, uh, meeting on Thursday, the 25th. Uh, to uh, this uh, afternoon session, and the trial chamber uh, believe uh, that the different council will use uh, their efforts to put question to uh, their clients uh, as soon as possible, so that we can save time for uh, the trial management meeting this afternoon. Uh, uh, in an effort to expedite our proceedings. And in addition to that, uh, the agenda, our tentative agenda has just uh, uh, moved from uh, the 25th of uh, June uh, to this afternoon. And in that afternoon, we will uh, continue our session on the fact on uh, the Security Office of uh, Prison. Uh, the next uh, uh, session, I would like to give uh, the floor to the Defense Council to ask uh, the question to uh, your clients. Please, Mr. Lawyer. So, thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Deutsch, is twenty one and M thirteen different? If so, what is the difference between these two? The accused, Mr. Lawyer, S twenty one, or the full word is the Security Office S twenty one. has been heard by all the participants in the chamber and the public for quite some time now. This S21 office is a unit which the, the standing committee organized and directly supervised based on the stipulation in Article 8 of the party statute and the standing committee member who directly supervised S21 was Son Sen, the seventh member of the Communist Party of Campuchia. All the people at S21 call Son Sen Ongka. So that is the matter related to S21. And as for M21, the name, it emerged within the last few days at the proceedings before the chamber in the document E5-2.10, which I wrote based on the order of NAD to request for the arrest of Prum Duong and request Onka to monitor So Sai. So M21 only emerged lately in the hearing. This M21 was not an independent unit organized and established by the standing committee. It was only a secretary of NAT, and he established during the time he was the chairman, and he himself appointed himself as Onka. So that was the reality. 
I would like to seek permission to provide an evidence in the document D fourteen one four zero or T S L four four seven nine which the E-256 Civil Party used that document. In that document, Nat asked Brother Mom Nai to write questions to ask Nguyen. And, at the end, Brother Mom Nai was asked by Nat to write, request Ong Ka to release this person, dated 25th, December 75, M21. And on the first page, Nat wrote, approved for the release with his signature, 21st December. I would seek permission from the president to show this one-page document on the screen. The president called officer, can you take the document from the accused and have it projected on the screen? The accused, I would like to seek your permission to read this part to the chamber. Request Onka to release this person. They teach 25th December 75, M21. This is a handwriting of Brother Mom Knight. Mr. President, I would like now to have it projected to have the first page projected with the annotation by NAD. Approved for the release, and that is NAD's signature, and the date is the 26th of December. I would like to inform the President that the M21 was used at S21 because Nat used that name. So this is the, my answer to the first part of the question of the defense counsel. The president, can you return the image to the normal view? Kasavut, my second question, who had the authority at M21? The accused. Mr. Lawyer, there was only one person, that is Nat. Nobody had any authority of M21. Kasavut, my third question is based on the numerous documents, especially E5 slash 2.10. You wrote a request to arrest Ang Lee and Prum Dung and request Ong Ka to monitor So Sai. Why did you say you have no authority? The accused. Mr. Lawyer. During that period of time, Nat asked me to summarize the confessions which were already extracted by the interrogators. So he wanted me to make a meaningful summary. And at the end, he asked me to write that in the request to arrest and monitor some people, as mentioned in the E5 slash 2.10 as an evidence. Also, 
there was my signature and my handwriting on the document E5 slash 2.9 and slash 2.8. Also, on the E5 slash 2.3, it was still in a draft form. However, on those documents, there was nowhere mentioning of M21, except on the E5 slash 2.10, where M21 was mentioned. So, Nat used me as his clerk. So, this is my brief explanation. So, Nat used me as I was a deputy chairman as his clerk, Mr. Gazavut. So, for the question is that you had no authority, but you were used as a clerk. Now, my, first, my first question, you are writing to request Onka for the arrest and monitor of those individuals. What happened next? The accused, Mr. Lawyer, I did not manage any of this work, of this work, and Nat was the one who managed it. So he asked the typist to type my text, and then he handed the original files to Brother Momnai as archive. And after that, the typed document was delivered to Comrade Main to go and make the arrest. And I would like to seek permission from the President to project some documents on the screen first. Document. E5 slash 2.9 at page 00. The ERN number is 00. 0 the President Court Officer take the document from the accused and project it on the screen. The accused, Mr. President, I would seek your permission to read the annotation. Comrade Chan, this is, use this as an archive. It has been printed 21st of June. So as I stated, my document was typed, and after that the original document was given to Brother Chan to keep and also, at the same time, he assigned Comrade Main to go and make the arrest. And I would like to seek the President's permission to present a document E5-2.5 on page 00 -206 The President, court officer, take the document from the accused and have it projected on the screen. Mr. President, I would seek your leave to 
reads the annotation of Nat. Comrade May, you are asked to go and find in every unit. If the person cannot be found, go and ask 11. Write the letter in the name of the chairman of the office with the date of 8 October. So this is the end of my hand, my reading. So this is it, my response to question number four. Thank you, says Kasavut. Now my fifth question. Did you personally use M21 in any other form? The accused, Mr. Lawyer, I use M21 in summarizing the confessions. If a confession was not clear, I wrote back to M21 for clarification. For example, on document E5 slash 2.2, I annotated I decided to send the confession of Nei Sokha to M21, and the reason the interrogation was mixed up. So that was my annotation to return the document back to M21. I only wish to read my annotation and there is no need to have it projected on the screen. This is to reflect that I did not have any authority to supervise M21. If the confession is not clear, I would have it returned back to M21 for further interrogation. My sixth question, says the lawyer, did Nat use Mom Nai to write? What did Nat ask Mom Nai to write on behalf of M21, the accused? Nat used Brother Mom Nai a lot in writing questions and confessions in a particular form for a release. However, it was not an actual release. The documents that I shown, the E2, E5 slash 2.2, was a testimonial to that. In addition, there were a number of documents written by Brother Mom Nai to request for the release, and that was seen in through those documents as Onka. The document E2 slash 55 used in the annex point two also shows such incident. Thank you, says Kasabut. Now my seventh question. Did not use any other name to, of any unit in order to request for the arrest of people? The accused, Mr. Lawyer, based on the reading of the documents that I have in my hands, I could say that not use the word M21 in order to arrest people in Sector 25. That means uh, to arrest those people from Ang District, Koh Thom, Luk Dai, and Swai, where he has direct contact. Separately, for the central zone, he used the word M03 instead of M21.
And document D32 slash 5 with the ERN 173 458 to 173. He used the word MO3 to request for the arrest of the people from the central zone. I do not request to have the document projected. However, I would like to verify that on page 00173, 45462, he deleted my words and he used, the word, he used his words in his writing to the superior. The words that I wrote. Brother M03, that means Brother Nat. He deleted my word and he replaced the biography of Kim Tot Elias Wa. And on third point, I wrote, you, making an arrest, the arrest or not, it's up to you. Made on the 27th of November, 75. So he deleted my, he omitted my words, and he attempted to rise to Brother Q, to Brother Q. As for Kim Tot Elis Wa, we request to have him arrested. He falsified his biography that he was a worker at Barai in Kampung Thom. So there was one incident, and towards the end, for the final document, he omitted and replaced. It was on page 00173461. Above, it reads the biography of Kim Tot, Alice Wa, and Takmoni. And towards the bottom, made on the 29th of November 1975, Office MO3. So this is to show that at the central zone, he used MO3. And his annotation was not to request any information to anybody, but it was to provide information. It reads, these two persons we selected from the, paper, from the document of those dudes, of combatants who opposed the Onka, and there were his, their real names, signature, same, 31st November. So I think he got confused. It could not be 31st of November, it could be the 1st of December. So the documents with the use of Office MO3, it was for the central zone. However, these documents survived at the S21 office, I think it, including both the first uh, draft and the final version. I believe that they are not used the document to arrest people at the central zone without going through the superior. So Nat went to arrest people arbitrarily, and this is shown in the surviving documents. That is my answer. Um, thank you. My uh, question number eight. If not, uh, continue to decision to arrest anyone uh, anyway, uh, why Anka, uh, Son Sen, and Pol Pot uh, fail to take any action against not? They accuse uh, Mr. Lawyer, uh, based on my observation of the historical uh, fact on that, there was many, but uh, I can tell you as the following. Uh, the first uh, event in December or uh, late uh, November, at the time my superior called me and not to work. Uh, when we were there, Nat told the superior that there was someone uh, intended to kill me. Uh, he did not even uh, finish, but the superior uh, uh, get an idea from anyone, and he, uh, the superior feel uh, furious, 
and said that if you decided to arrest the people on the ground that you you were fearful of your personal security, it's a very uh, extreme and it's a, you are individualist. This is the first incident. The second second incident, uh, uh, the six pages documents that I uh, reported, uh, the five pages of document I uh, show to the, the chamber, it saw the full release when he he was aware that uh, Onka uh, get knowledge of uh, his activity. So the fall release uh, started on the 20th of December in D57 uh, and next uh, 003. Uh, and the fall, uh, the fall release uh, uh, exists on the document uh, the 20th uh, December and it ended in the 8th of uh, um, uh, March 1976. I forget uh, the ER number. In uh, a document of release uh, one victim, it's uh, E2, E5 slash 2.8. So uh, the uh, historical incident uh, not created the, the full release of uh, the victim because he made the uh, unilateral arrest uh, in advance. Um, the third incident in March 1976, uh, Onka removed not from S21 uh, based on uh, the basic need uh, for uh, the work. Uh, in, uh, he was removed in March, and the fourth incident, the most important incident, that Pol Pot uh, approved a number of matters uh, on the 30th of March 1976 on the, the first paragraph that um, uh, the trial chamber uh, knew that well. Uh, in that uh, the right to make decision inside and outside of the rank. Uh, in April on the 19th, the 20, uh, the 21st, uh, the central, uh, the standing committee uh, hold uh, three days uh, meetings and uh, Pol Pot uh, tried to suspend Nats uh, from his uh, position.